This is not on mine. This is not on mine. I'm gonna ask on the shoe. I care. Nice to meet you, Joe. I didn't get to see you. I wanna, I wanna, you know. And Russell. Okay. Peace and blessings. Good morning. Jersey. Watch yourself. Okay. Watch it now. New Jerusalem. That's what they was calling it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you never heard that? No. Were well, you from the bricks? Um, from East Orange, actually. Yeah, from, from the city. bricks, you're right Yes, there. yes, you just went there uh, with me. Yeah. I could tell. Hey, Lottie, it's right there, too. We all in the house. Good. Uh, right there. Huh? La, la, la from Halstead, but no, that's something different. Something different. Um, no, actually, from the presidential side of town near Bloomfield. Cool. I could do that. We could call the school. Right there. Yeah. Turn right Real easy. Mic what? Okay. Sorry, I checked check, all check, the mics. Check. I sang it each and every one. The mic sounds nice. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Good. Testing. Got test Hello, testing. 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 No, it's testing. not really on. Testing. This one works. Okay. For yes, sir. Great. Testing. It's All not. Good. Okay. 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 <laughs> All good. Yes, sir. All right. Check. <laughs> check. Check. Wow. So, imaging, come and drive whenever you're ready. Come you got the CD roll. You got the CD roll. Stand by. No, don't tempt me. Hold on. Yes, we are. We are all together. How long is it? Oh, okay. I'll ask you. I'll ask you on mic. Cool. Don't stop trying to go with me in the talking. All right, ten seconds. Yeah, it's your favorite. Like this. I'll just reach it. This. We're good to go. All right. So, so five, four, three. Two. So wait, am I saying anything? Hey, like, welcome hey, to Hey, welcome. What, what, what are we welcome? Because it's not Urban View. It's not it's the Karen Hunter Show. It's, it's a town hall. Series. It's got you. Hall. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Chris had to still say Urban View as well. That's town hall. Cool. So. Is it? I thought it would be. We're going to do another five down to get this going. Five, four, three. Stop being disruptive, Mr. Washington. <laughs> Two, one. Welcome to. Oh. Start over, because I... Uh, <laughs> Denzel messed you up, right? Because Denzel watching this fall, being here, you know, throwing all kind of stuff, sexy stuff all, all near me. That's what he's doing, making me all nervous. Am I supposed to close my ears? Yeah, no, no, you're an actress. It's okay, I'm sorry. You're just acting. It's all good. Let's start that over. Takes a roller, so five, four, three. Welcome to the Fences Town Hall right here at Sirius XM Urban View, and I am your host, Karen Hunter. I'm going to just jump right in and introduce our wonderful cast. Our, ooh, what beautiful people. It is so nice to meet all of you. Let me start with the youngest. Um, Sanai, you have had a great, a great year. Sanai Sydney, she plays right now. Uh, <laughs> you, you may know her as the young Kizzy in the uh, remake of, of Root. She also uh, is playing Taraji P. Henson's daughter in hidden figures and uh, I know you from American Horror Story this year but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, next to her is Russell Hornsby. He plays Lions, uh, Troy's son in Fences. He also is Hank Griffin. That's where I know him from because I'm a grim. I'm a, <laughs> I watch way too much television so I know you and we'll, we'll get into your story right in a second. Uh, he also played in Wilson's, uh, August Wilson's Jitney for which he won a Drama Desk Award and an Obie Award. Uh, next to him, you can, yeah, I guess we can do applause. Yes, 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 yes. Well, everyone is deserving. Steven Henderson plays Bono, uh, also played Arthur in HBO's Everyday People. You may know him from that. He won an Obie Award for his portrayal of Pops Washington in the Pulitzer Prize winning play Between Riverside and Crazy and a Drama Desk Award for playing Turnbow in Jitney, which is another mm -hmm. August Wilson play. <laughs> On the end, Jovan Adepo. A depot? A depot. So I was right the first time, right the first time. From, from Great Britain. Uh, he has a BA in political science and philosophy, so we're going to have a conversation today. Uh huh. Uh, he plays Corey, and uh, let's give him a round of applause as well. <laughs> Michael T. Williamson, Gabriel Maxson, best known uh, maybe, no, he's known for this role after you see this. Uh, you may not know him for anything else, but uh, most of you may know him as Bubba Blue. You know, the guy in Forrest Gump that came up with the 50 million ways to make shrimp. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but because, because culturally, I know you from waiting to exhale. But we'll get into that as, as well. Uh, but, you know, he uh, also 
Um, <laughs> your mom was a CPA and your dad was an uh, Air Force officer. And I, I want to talk to you a little bit about that uh, today. Uh, okay. Next to him, give him some applause. Viola Davis. I play around on my show because uh, many days you're my spirit animal. I, I, uh, I know I, I, you know, I kind of get the spirit of Annalise, which I shouldn't probably do. No, no, it's not. It's not. Which is why my show is a little crazy. Um, but uh, you have you have brought to the big screen. Everyone knows, you know, many no Oscar nominations, and you should have won uh, at least a couple. Definitely doubt um, for sure. Uh, also, of course, you've won uh, Tony for Fences and. Uh, but how to get away with murder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that today, yeah. <laughs> for sure. And um, I actually had a whole sheet for you, but uh, I'm like Denzel Washington. I just put it to the side. There's, no, there's nothing to say about Denzel Washington other than Denzel Washington with you, of course. Uh, so I went to, uh, I, I actually saw both um, play, both times that you were on Broadway. Um, friend of mine's daughter actually played this role uh, in the last uh, rendition. And so I went to see the movie, and people were like, how was the movie? How was Fences? And I said, it, it remarkably was just like the play. How much of a challenge was that, to take that play, which was so intense and so much, had so much power, and bring it to the, the screen, you know, and translate all that August Wilson wrote into a play to, to make it happen? It's a testament to his brilliance. You know, when we were filming, I forgot how far into it, but a couple of days, I was like, it works. Mm. It works on screen like it works. Did you, were you in doubt that it would work, Denzel Washington? August Wilson's one of the greatest playwrights in American history. Good material is good material. I didn't doubt it, but sometimes you don't know. But it became something completely, not just that it works, it became something completely different and just as interesting and then for, for us that have done the play it became even yeah. more because there was another yeah. another window was open. This is like a reunion you know um, I when I saw it on Broadway most of you <laughs> were on Broadway as well and you know to come and you said it, it was in P Pittsburgh you actually filmed it in Pittsburgh like what gets filmed there you, you brought it back for a reason how difficult was it for you to come back together as a unit was that, because um, I know Michael T. immediately said, this should happen all the time, just looking around at, at the folk. Yeah, well, I, you know, I miss this family. This is actually a mm. real family. Mm. Uh, if you want to get twisted up, mess with one of these people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean that. What does twisted up look like, exactly? You know, <laughs> it, it depends on what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is truly family, you know what I mean? You don't get an ensemble like this that wants to be with each other all the time away from work. And that's what this is. I mean, and it starts at the top with Denzel. It's a trickle down. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, this is Denzel's essence that made all this happen. Mm. It's really, it's beautiful. Third directorial, the, you know, you, you direct it. And, mm. and of course, you know, I'm sure everybody's asking you, how, how is it to direct? And, and I saw the 60 Minutes piece last night, and Viola was like, this was, uh, was wonderful to be directed by him. It was natural. Why was it natural to be directed by him? I use the word natural? No, you, uh, let, me, let me get the Let's see. <laughs> um, you I'm said, wait, wait, here's what you of... said. You said it was effortless, and, yes. and, 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 he, and he never gets in the way, right? Yes. That's what you said. Yep, exactly. he never gets in the way. That's a perfect way to describe him. He knows when to step in and give you a word that's going to unleash, you know, performance. Sometimes he'll walk by you and stop, think about it, and go, you want me to say something? <laughs> And you could say yes or no, but you know, then he'll uh, move on and he trusts that you're gonna hit it. He, because here's the thing, a huge part of directing, I think, is the casting. You gotta trust the actors you put in the role. And that's what Denzel did. That's, you know, it's a testament to him as a director, producer, that he got most of the Broadway cast. Yes. I mean, usually when it goes to film, you get all the A-listers. So he really fought. That's what for I these did. Actors. Well, these yeah. are, I'm going to say, uh, hello. You didn't hear yeah. me. I you too near me to hear me. Hello. Yeah, I, I did get the A list. Yeah. No. Hello. <laughs> One, you know what I two, mean by that. <laughs> they, and they are A listers in terms of talent and all of that. I, you know what I mean by 
A-listers in Hollywood terms. These are A-listers in terms of talent. And when you get the talent, you just trust it. You get out of the way. That's what he did. Oh, I want to go somewhere with you on that. So I'm going to stick a pin in that because I want to I wanna ask Javon as somebody that was grafted in to this family, right? Because he mm -hmm. wasn't on Broadway. I don't remember seeing you mm -hmm. unless you look different. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I don't remember him. How difficult was it to come into a unit that was on? I'm going to ask Sanaya the same question that was already fully formed. Uh, it was really intimidating just because you do get an opportunity to work with talented artists like this. So I wanted to come in and just do the best I could to not mess up. <laughs> you know, they, they like to uh, relate it to being or getting the band back together with a few new players in the band. So, you know, you don't want to be that person that comes in and is messing up the sound of the, right. the music that they're making. So, so they, where were you when you were selected? I was in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, the traditional way of casting, you know, you go on an audition and if you're lucky you get a callback. So I had a couple of callbacks and then my last audition being with, with uh, Denzel at the studio. What was the scene? How come you never like me? This mm. is the trailer. Okay. Yeah. So Denzel, he killed it. What was, what was it about Jovan that made you say this one? He didn't try to kill it. Mm. Other people come in, they try to kill it. Mm -hmm. He listened. You know, more than a few actors came in with the with the with the end of the scene, at the beginning or the result or whatever it was they were trying to do, and I would take them in different directions, and they their eyes got big. I'm like, right, you thought it was going to be like mm -hmm. this, and it's not. He was able, he was soft enough and, and, and receptive enough to move wherever we went and got right up to the point where he was ready to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right, gonna stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it took, to his credit, it took a long time to get there mm -hmm. because he was listening and he let it happen as opposed to trying to make it happen. Right, so Sanaya, you're like um, 22. <laughs> <laughs> you, look like really, you look really young for your age, and I want to know your secret, because um, you know, as I get older, you know, I know black don't crack, but you just are taking it to a whole other level. Uh, yeah, it's been some year. Uh, same question that I asked Javon, how hard was it to come into a cast that they know each other, that is so, it's like dancing. Y'all know every move before it's made. How hard was that for you? I mean, you know, not everything's easy, so the first time I was like, okay, I'm gonna do my best no matter what happens, just know that I got to meet him. And, uh, uh, but it was. I see why she got. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was, at times, you could say, um, no matter what, if you don't get it, it's okay. Still know that he tried. But when I got this part, I was like, so excited to meet everybody. And be that I would, I would be a part of a family like this. How old are you? I'm ten. Ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So at ten, you haven't had a whole lot of rejection, uh, according to your filmography, <laughs> which is uh, longer than uh, mine. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've been living quite a long time. Not that I'm an actress, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. you haven't gotten no a lot. You're playing uh, in some really, really powerful <laughs> movies that <laughs> happen you. to come out the same day as Fences. But yeah. uh, no, I'm just saying. So when, what does rejection look like to you? At 10. Rejection. Um, sometimes no is just the answer. So we just have to live your life the best you can. Wow. Okay. Um, From yeah, the I'm mouth of babe. Uh -huh, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like ashamed. I can go home now. I'm proud of myself. Uh, <laughs> Russell Hornsby. You, uh, you know, again, Graham. I, I want to ask you an off question because I was just curious, you know, um, are you ever going to have a love interest on Grimm that's not a hex and beast or something that's going <laughs> something that's gonna eat your face off or something? Like, I just, I'm just tired of the brother not, you know, he's got like witches and stuff. Like, it's, it's terrible what's happening to you on Probably that show. Probably not, but you know, uh, you know, uh, okay. I don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be all right. Okay. <laughs> struggling I'm like can the brother get some love yeah. you know everybody's you know she's a hex and beast you know anyway so you <laughs> you uh, again coming into this film you know part of this family and you're, you're playing a role that you know I really didn't like you that much you know because you, you you're mm -hmm. a beggar you're begging I don't mm -hmm. like begging people you mm -hmm. know but that's your role mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> transitioning into the to the film was that difficult from, from the play no I mean I, I think you just had to uh, trust in the work uh, trust in the material, trust in August's words, and um, I just looked at rededicating myself. Uh, you know, as we said, we had we brought the band back together, so we we're a family. So I knew that uh, we would all hold each other up, 
And, you know, it was just about having fun, really. So and the training that you had to do to come back into this was was what? I think just dedicate, re, as I said, just to rededicate yourself. Like? And, um, you, go deeper doing? into it. You, you know what I mean? What are you doing? What are, what's going on? Well, I mean, what I choose is, I like to say, uh, I, I choose to bring a part of me to August. You know, you bring some of your joy, but you also bring some of your pain. And because August demands that of you. You know, these are three-dimensional uh, well-drawn characters and so you have to go deep in into aspects of your history your ancestry you know and your past and I choose to do that because you know Lyons is longing you know for love from his father and so you know uh, Russell knows what that feel, looks and feels like you know so it wasn't hard it wasn't a difficult transition mm -hmm. you know so you just have to ask yourself uh, you know what does Lyons need what does Lyons want and then uh, you know just go down that road, and August has the road map, and you just follow it. Speaking of the road map, uh, Mr. Stephen Henderson, you are, oof, the dance between you and, and the Troy character, your, I was just telling Michael T. In, in, the, in the green room, his performance, damn, you know, so I, I just had to say that. Um, but yours, you know, the dance with you and Denzel, the, the familiarity, the subtlety, you know, you brought all of that to to this to this role, and as you, someone say a minor character lit up the screen, you know, um, what were you trying to accomplish with this that, that was different from the play? Oh, you know, I don't know if there's anything so terribly different. Uh, you're always trying to bring your best, you know, and when you're working with the best, uh, and I mean that in every way when everything around you is on point you just don't want to be the weak link you know what I'm saying and uh, but also I'm just so grateful you know what I'm saying and and um, and I've had some great friends great mentors great leaders and and that's who Troy is for me he's one of the greatest leaders greatest mentors that Bono had in his life and and Denzel is just such an, a noble honorable he heroic person you know, uh, that uh, to be his best friend, you, it's not too hard to play because then he looks at you like you're his best friend. Yeah. So when he looks at you like that and welcomes you like that, you know, so yeah, you say it's a dance and it's it just, you know, I, I, maybe I was, uh, I don't know which one was, had the heels on dancing backwards, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he's just, uh, he's a joy and August, August, yes, St. Gray yes. August. Um, That's all I can I, say. I use August Wilson a lot as an example in my show as somebody who was incredibly brilliant, dropped out of high school on purpose, mm -hmm. and, and went on to become this great person. He wanted a black director for this. Yeah, I'm going there. Um, he wanted a black director for this. He got it. He got it. Did you know him, by the way? He died before? I met him. No, I, okay. I, I met him. Uh, I spent a day with Denzel. him up in uh, Seattle back in 2005. Did you know then, um, and, I, and I, I'm going to ask you, did you have a relationship with his plays before you met him? Is that what inspired you to do this? Because you are immersed. You're going to be directing, uh, uh, producing all ten. Uh, this was the film version of Fences. Let me, let me clarify that. I'm not directing. Right, all you're ten. producing. I'm producing. Right, and acting. Ten. I heard you when and you I'm said you got bills. I'm not acting in all ten. I heard that. I heard that. I'm not acting in all ten. I'm not acting in the other ones. Right. I'm executive producing the other ones. Okay, all right. So your relationship with August Wilson was it really it's through the work, through the words. I mean, I don't, I didn't know him. I just spent a day with him. He was working on Gem of the Ocean, and he wanted to talk to me about it. So I flew up to Seattle, and we talked about everything but Gem of the Ocean. But uh, it was just an honor. I didn't know that was the last day I was going to see him. Mm. But it was an honor just to spend the day with him and to, to 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 pick his brain a little bit. What's so special about his work? He's just a great, great writer, and obviously. Viola plays a, a, a role. It's like where the great actor meets the great role, and mm. and and that's very rare. And and I don't know if you've seen the film, but you'll you you'll find out again. if you, you saw the play. Again. But for a man to have written that role mm -hmm. that speaks to when in Viola, I'm about to say Rose again, and Viola can speak to it better than me, but for a man to have written that role for how a woman feels about her man mm. is, I mean, I don't know how he did it. Viola? Yeah. Yeah. S yeah. Well, I always say that uh, Rose's journey is a complete journey of a woman 
You know, when you meet her, she's in the background. She's dedicated her entire life to her family emotionally. Her purpose is in her marriage, her child, her home. That's her purpose. And then you see her get hurt. You see, you know, the rug being pulled underneath her feet and her pain is so specific. It's, it's just so specific. And then she gets to the part of forgiveness mm -hmm. and accountability. That's a complete journey. Um, and there is no point that you don't believe it. There is no point that any woman is not going to be able to say, that was me at one point, you know? And I always say August, I remember August told us when he was writing Seven Guitars, he was just writing it about the band. It was just about the men. And then all of a sudden, this woman came into his head while he was writing, and she was like, hey. <laughs> and he was like, huh? Hey. And then she said, you know, I got something to say. And he said, OK. And that's how he wrote Vera mm -hmm. wow. in Seven Guitars. And I think that's the way characters come to you when you're an artist. If your spirit, your imagination, your skill, your brilliance is open enough, they come into you. And you either accept them and hear them and listen to them, or you don't. And he did. So August Wilson could write for a woman. He One of the things he said is just what Viola said he, when I was up there with him. I was asking, well, how do you go about it? He said, well, I lock the doors and shut the windows and do everything. The characters come in the room and they talk to me and I write down what they say. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. And that's a gift. Mm -hmm. um, so why did he need a uh, black director? Could a white director not have It's not color. It's culture. Explain the difference, because I think we're, we're Steven in a space Spielberg right now. did Schindler's List. Mm -hmm. Martin Scorsese did Goodfellas, right? Steven Spielberg could direct Goodfellas. Martin Scorsese probably could have done a good job with Schindler's List, but there are cultural differences. You know, I know, you know, we all know what it is when a hot comb hits your hair on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. What it smells like. Huh? That's a cultural difference. Not just the color difference. Right. So it's the culture. You know about a hot comb? <laughs> so now no, I know. she don't know about no hot comb. You don't know nothing about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <That's laughs> right. right. see, see how everybody laughs? That's a cultural difference. Yeah. That's not a race difference. That's just that motion. <laughs> That's all I got to say, right? I know what a hot comb is. Okay. 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 All right. The, the, the space that we're in, culture versus race, and how important it is, you know, um, where we are right now as a culture, as, a, as an American family. Um, you're producing a film that's culturally germane to a particular time and a particular people. You know, the, the, even the Martin Luther King, JFK, uh, Jesus, uh, trilogy, you know, triumvirate that, that was on the wall. Uh, we didn't have that on our wall, but our next door neighbor did. Um, and, and it's that's what you're talking about? I put that yeah. in there. Huh? You did that? <laughs> yeah, I put Jesus everywhere. And that wasn't not how, you know, and there was that velvet, uh, yeah, yeah the paint. <laughs> you know, they put that below, or whatever they call that velvet. Yeah. Yeah. Every, did you have it on your wall, Viola? Jesus. I had nothing on my okay. wall when right. I was growing up, right. but that's <laughs> something else.